Now, so far, we've talked a lot about robot space yeah. probes, and they're, they're not that exciting. We want astronauts, right? That's, that's not what we picture, right? You picture that. You picture humans uh, floating around and being astronauts, and that's the yeah. appeal, right? I mean, the number of kids who go in fancy dress to a party dressed as an astronaut compared to the number who go as a rocket designer or a satellite designer is a pretty large ratio. <laughs> pretty large ratio. Though there's a few robots sometimes, but yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah. what's the point of putting humans to space? I, and, and this is something I think is always brought up, right? You know, because robots, they can do everything essentially a human can do now. They're cheaper because, yes, you have to build a robot, but humans are expensive to maintain, as we're going to explore. Yeah. And they survive better. Yeah, I mean, in the early days, people thought there were things that, you know, back in the 1950s, yes. there were things that a human could do that no robot could do. The, that's really not, that, the, that's case not the case anymore. And even no. then, actually, even, even back to the Gemini rockets, they were entirely controlled by a computer. Yes. The astronauts maybe just pressed the button, mark, land. Yeah, yeah. But there's actually no way a human would have enough reaction speed and mathematical ability to land the thing by itself. Exactly, that's right. Um, and you know, if you put humans in space, you have to supply them food, air, water, keep them at the right temperature. And if something, and also, you know, if something goes wrong, as we're going to explore in a, uh, the next section, if you lose a robot, no one's going to be sad over that. So why, why put humans in space? Is it just a waste, some sort of <laughs> irrational, economically stupid thing to do? Look, I mean, firstly, you know, there's always a discussion about colonization itself. Are we going to move to space? You know, Mars, people talk about Mars as planet B and that sort of thing. Moving and living on the moon. Yep. No. <sighs> Now, we'd have a debate about this other places in this course, yeah. in the planets course. We have a, I have a debate with Carly about this, and you're going to have a chat with Pete about some of this after they're talking about Mars. Yep. Um, to my mind, the idea here is that you know, if you've got this enormous long history of Earth, 4.6 billion years of no intelligence, and then intelligence appears just in the last blink of an eyelid, and what are the odds it stays around? Yeah. I, don't think I mean, if there's a 1% chance for nuclear war per year, in the next 10,000 years, there's going to be a nuclear war, right? That's right. Um, and so maybe we've got a very brief window when we're intelligent enough to go into space and we haven't yet destroyed ourselves. Yeah. And we've got to take advantage of that narrow window to get somewhere else so that we can't destroy ourselves. Once we spread that, around five lot. or six planets, we're probably safe. And that's right. And that's a lot of what people argue about extending the human race. But, but, but I also think there are more applicable things, right? People love astronauts, right? You know, if, if the Americans race the Russians to the moon, if they just put a little robot there, no one would have cared. Seeing Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin walk around and talking and waving, that's what inspired people. And that also in inspires people to keep caring and funding space. Yeah, and I mean, if you do a cost benefit for the Apollo missions, they always talk about the spin-offs that came from them. Yeah. But I think really it was a national prize. It thing. was. But I'd say if you looked at it overall, the panic and the science education and the number of young people who yeah. got inspired by that who ended up often in Silicon Valley companies, there's a whole generation of technologists who, by some combination of that and Star Trek, got inspired to the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great talking to kids about space because, you know, you don't want them to all be astronomers or people like us, but they're going to go do other amazing things and other areas of science that transforms their society. It's very hard to put a number to that, yeah. but it's certainly a real effect. Whether it actually pays for itself is an interesting question. But this is one of the few bits of science that's inspiring enough to get people to do the hard slog of multiple years of physics and maths at school. And you're not going to do it by seeing a robot do it. Yes. And then, of course, there's national pride. Yeah. I mean, right now, the uh, Chinese government and the Indian government, it's, it's the ultimate status symbol yeah. to have astronauts. It is. You know, that's why people are doing it, to say, we can do it too. Yep. So it's an end in itself. We're not doing it because humans are good at doing anything. Robots can do almost everything better than humans in space. Even on Earth, they can beat us on most things. Um, you're doing it as an end in itself. 